we are going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to narrate to you what is happening as we go along. We just left the kiosk. At the kiosk, you'll find the envelopes. You throw $3 inside the envelope. You're good until you're ready to leave. You peel off the ticket that's attached to the envelope. You stick that on your dashboard so that way it can be seen and you're good to go. That's the ranger station right there in front of us. That's only open during hunting season. On the right is a really nice fishing pond. On the left is the beginning of the main lake. Up to the right, you'll see that fifth wheel camper right there and a set of bathrooms. That's handicapped parking, handicapped camping. And it's actually pretty nice. Up here to the right right now, that's another camping area. To the left is the first boat ramp. To the right of the boat ramp, directly across, is another camping area. And then just past these trees, that clearing is also another camping area. I have camped there, and it's fun. I like being by the lake. And coming up here past these set of trees is the normal camp areas. On the left is the pier, the fishing pier. It's got two gazebos, one on shore and one on the pier. And then, like I said, up here at the right where the tree's clear is the area for the main camping. I say main camping because they're all side by side and... You get your privacy if you want it. It depends on what you choose. As we make this corner right here on the Shell Road, that one directly in front of us is where we used to camp all the time. The one to the right, if you back in, you're pointing south, but there's trees on both sides of you, so it kind of defeats the, the purpose of solar. This bathroom on the right is handicapped accessible if you go up this concrete slab and then all the way around there's a sidewalk that gets to it. That's concrete slab is the last place for handicapped parking. Uh, and you can camp there, handicapped campers. To the right and left of us are plenty of different camping areas. This road will go to the right. During the rainy season, it's a little hard to access without a four-wheel drive. There's camping area in front of us, and then there's another bathroom to the left. But if you go up here, there's a dip right here. This is a wash. And this does fill up with water. I think it's pretty obvious. That Class A right there, by the way, he ripped both of his awnings off this weekend. I don't know how he did it, but he ripped both awnings off. And again, there's camping to the left, to the right. Now what we're doing is we're doing a horseshoe. This goes from the very first entrance to the very last entrance to the camping areas. Now there are other entrances in between, but they kind of fill in the horseshoe. If you understand what I'm saying. If I'm making sense. I am a little nervous right now. I'm not used to talking directly into a microphone. Not without a camera being there. I like talking to the camera because I feel like I can talk to the people. But now I just feel like I'm talking to my computer and it's just not the same. Birds chirping in the background is my clock. That Class A right there, that guy, he, he's he got it going on. If you like glamping. You got everything you want for glamping. I was going to park up here. I started pulling in on the right hand side. But then the fifth wheel from the weekend before. You'll see it pulling in right now. He is the one that played the country music all day and night, all day and night. I love country music, but I don't want to listen to somebody else's all day and night. I'm going to skip this part. 
I had changed my mind and decided not to park there. I didn't want to have to deal with their music anymore. <coughs> Especially this weekend. This is my redemption weekend for my videos, trying to make them a little bit more entertaining. So we go up here and we make a left and we'll hit the interior roads of this horseshoe. There's no more camping to the right. There's a lot of boat ramps. There's a lot of good fishing areas, but no more camping. This is These are the only areas for camping. That fifth wheel was here, or that class B, I'm sorry. That class B was here when I showed up. It belongs to that elderly couple right there. It was still there when I left. A couple of them were. These are good uh, tent camping areas, that one to the right. And then you can get, if you can fit your camper there, it's you can camp there. If you can't fit a camper but a tent there, then put a tent there. It's They don't care. All of the camp areas have fire pits. They're just rock circle fire pits. Uh, the Most of them have picnic tables. I've seen no signs saying not to move the picnic tables. They're not anchored to the ground. I have seen where people have taken where they had a large group and they had picked up picnic table from the lot next to them and moved it over onto theirs. Uh, unfortunately, they don't put them back. So some of these campsites will have two picnic tables and the one next to it won't have one at all. That one right there to the right has got a, a fire pit and no picnic table. But as you can see, there's plenty of tent campers. That lady to the right has had her fire about 18, 20 feet in the air. I will show you that video. It was blurry recording, but you can still get the idea. It was huge. It was ridiculously huge. I chose this lot to the left of me. That's where I was parked. And this bathroom, that once you get around this bend, this bathroom was the closest one, which I could access with my chair. I can get to it, but I can't access the bathroom itself because it drops off from the roadway here, and then there's a big step up on the concrete slab. So there, I would have had to leave my chair outside. I'd have had to work my way in there, which means I would have had to carry my cane with me, and it just wasn't worth it. Setting up the Poo Poo Palace was the best option for me. This Class A right here was also here when we got here, obviously, and it was here when we left. And you're supposed to be out by 9 o'clock Sunday evening. So they still had time to get out when I left. The only time you can stay longer than that is during hunting season and if you have a hunting permit. If you're with somebody that has a hunting permit, that's awesome too. This road that we're on will loop around to that main road. This is where that section is that was the wash out. And then we just wind up going back around. Now, there's a Class 8 camper. If you remember at the beginning, I said he ripped off both of his awnings. I'm going to show you that. We'll go back through this wash out. You'll see that he moved his Class A from where it was. And I don't know how he did it. There's no trees right there or anything. But apparently he backed into something and he ripped off both of his awnings. He pulled up to the next campsite and he's trying to get him to go back up again. This is where he was. There's no trees on the right hand side for him to back into that I can see. Unless he drove into these trees right here. It's the only thing I can think of. But if you see him, he's trying to get him to roll up. He's mangled them both. He got the rear up, I think. Or no, yeah, he got the rear up, but he did. Oh, it's a mess.
But that's the tour. You don't have to listen to my narration anymore. Thank you for listening.